perfume sweet and whiskey strong I damn sure ain't no underdog I'm not full down, but I get back up And I shine bright, it's when I go inside You say I can, well darling, and watch me You can't stop me, cause it's fun So if you can't tell, I have been readmitted to the hospital for round two of chemo. So the last video in the vlog was me getting ready to be admitted for the first time. And I'll be honest, the first one was really, really hard. I didn't really have a lot of energy to vlog it. So we're gonna, just going to pick up right here at round two. Um, I'm going to talk more about kind of how the rounds work in chemo and stuff. but. Today, I wanted to touch on the topic of hair, because clearly I don't have any anymore, um, which is sucks, but, um, so I'm going to talk about the first time that I had to shave my head when I was originally treated, and this time around, because they were two very different experiences. So the first time that we did chemo, I knew I was going to lose my hair. It was inevitable, there was no stopping it. It was going to happen. I dreaded that day so much. The anticipation kind of killed me and I'll never forget the day that it started falling out. I was three weeks into chemo and it was a Monday morning. I was getting ready to go draw my blood for my chemo the next day. When I got up that morning, you know, I get up and kind of brush it through and I went and had breakfast and a few hours later I got up to go get ready to go to the hospital to get my blood drawn. Thank God my mom works from home because I remember I started brushing my hair to start straightening it and it just like, I mean it just cascaded off my shoulders like running water, like it was just so fast. Every, every stroke that my hair, my mom came, heard me crying and when she came in would catch the clumps like mid-air and it was just handfuls. And I will never forget, it still kind of makes me emotional. Um, I'll never forget that day. And it was so hard, because I then had to go out in public. Um, and then that day, my brother-in-law shaved his head for me. Because we were going to be shaving my head soon. So, of course, you know, I get a picture of that in public and I just start bawling. Um, so the first time that... I shaved my head was the most traumatizing thing I've experienced, I think. And I want to talk a lot about how to kind of react to that as an outside person. Because so many people say, it's just hair, you're beautiful with or without, but that doesn't really help. And I know that everybody is just trying to, but, like, you know, I mean, if I had just shaved my head for fun, everyone that would have just thought I was a crazy person. Like, no one would be saying, oh, you bald is beautiful. Like, they would have said, what were you thinking? As a bystander, at least in my situation, I know some people probably does help them. It might make them feel better. For me, it was hard hearing all of that. I would much rather hear that it just sucks, that they feel sorry, that they can't believe I'm going through this, that I shouldn't have to do something like that. Because I know that's what they really want to say, but they think that it's going to hurt my feelings. And it's not, because it does suck, and I shouldn't have to be going through this as a 22 year old, or 21 at that point time. It's okay to recognize that. It's okay to recognize how much all of this sucks. It actually kind of helps. To know that people understand how hard this is and how strong we have to be to go through it. Especially as young women in this kind of a society. Because you don't hear. Like, songs don't talk about bald girls. They talk about long, long blonde hair or long curly hair or whatever. Like, listen to any country song. They are not talking about a girl that is bald. One of the reasons it made it tolerable was that your hair changes a lot when it's about to fall out. So I did a lot of research about it and like, uh, luckily 
When your hair falls out from any kind of chemo, it's usually the same process as far as how your hair handles it. And so your hair actually becomes greasy, like overly greasy to help with kind of lubricating the hair follicles so it doesn't hurt as bad. But it does, like it actually kind of is a little painful to have your hair falling out. Um, your follicles just get really sensitive and like when you're laying on it, it kind of it kind of hurts a little bit or just it's just kind of uncomfortable it also like dreads itself i had one big clump in the back of my head that dreaded itself into my other hair to save it from falling out so i had one strip that like went all the way down I, my hair was probably about down to here like this little nike swoosh and then i had this one little strand that went like almost to my butt the last day that I had hair, it was just like ridiculous. So I threw it up in a ponytail and like had to pin it in there. And so that night my hairdresser came and a few friends came and all of my guy friends shaved their head too. But it was, it was just terrible. My eyes, I had my eyes closed the entire time. My mom was sitting there holding my hand. It was the hardest thing I've had to do to this day. So this time around was a little different. So you have a lot of rules when you do a bone marrow transplant. Well, uh, technically it's a stem cell transplant, but I'm on the bone marrow transplant floor. And we'll talk more about the regulations and kind of the rules I have to follow, but I'm going to touch on one because it's really pertinent. So I have a pick line right here, and that is pretty much an all-time IV. So I have this two kind of, they're called lumen, that hang out of your chest right here and that's where you get your chemo in. But it's because it's stitched into my chest, has a really high risk of infection. So I can only change this dressing once a week. So you're only allowed to take a full shower once a week. I can't finally convince the nurses to let me go four days. So for four days, I couldn't wash my hair. So not only was it greasy from the chemo because it was trying to help it fall out, but then it was even more greasy because I couldn't wash it. it I, you, I'm laying down most of the time because I'm so tired. It was just, it was matted and gross and it didn't even feel like hair. One night, just real low key, my nurses came in and they shaved it for me with my parents here. And I didn't cry this time and I think it was because the anticipation kind of killed me, knowing that it's gonna fall out again. And my hair was just finally getting to a length where I felt pretty. It was down to my shoulders and I could straighten it and curl it and make it look wavy. Like I could do a lot with it and I felt so pretty again. And I would take selfies and I hadn't taken selfies in a long time. It just like, this time it kind of was a need. Like I needed to do this because I'm uncomfortable and I just wanna get it over with. So we were in my room and they had the hospital provided clippers and we shaved it and it was done and over with and now I've got my white cap that I always wear and it sucks because I look like a boy. It's fine now, but it really isn't. So that's been my experience. Like I said, this is a blog that I want to help you guys with. I want to help other young survivors or young cancer fighters, especially women kind of understand what's gonna happen and maybe provide a little bit of insight because I didn't get a lot of that. I have such a rare cancer and I'm doing rare treatments that you just don't know. You have no idea. Like All you hear is, well, this is how people normally respond, but you're young and healthy and strong. And it's like, yeah, I'm young and healthy and strong besides the fact that I've got cancer. So you guys, like, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. Also, go like our Facebook page um, if you want to follow me on Instagram. I post a lot about kind of cancer and my journey and all of that. So I'll have all of that in the description, or in the, in the description below. And like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. I need video ideas anyway, and I want to help anyone that I can in this process, so. I will see y'all later.